Hey guys, DJ Lifestyle here back with another video. Here you're going to hear Jeffrey Sachs talk about how the America, the, the US economy is basically shagged. Um, they're spending trillions of dollars on wars uh, uh, and wasting it really and without any uh, outcome. Uh, let me let him say what he has to say about it. I was going to respond and then I thought, you know, something's a little deeper than this. It's one failure after another. Absolute disaster after another. Trillions of dollars down the drain. And it's the same cast of characters. And it makes you think. It's not just a lack of accountability. There's something obvious. <laughs> it's in plain sight what's happening. In a way, they're winning. They're not winning in anything that has to do with my interests or your interests, Judge, or the interests of the American people. But they've gotten the military spending and the defense-related budget up to about $1.5 trillion this year. More contracts spilling out everywhere. They got two wars going on. This is phenomenal. Can you imagine Raytheon and, and uh, Lockheed and Northrop Grumman and, and others? We got two wars and maybe the wars are gonna spread, in fact. And they've been able to mobilize $5 trillion over this period in failed efforts and they're still there the very same people is that is that what the u.s has spent since 9 11 five trillion dollars in all these failed wars the the, the uh, estimate is you know worth people looking at you can go to the website of the watson the, sorry watson institute uh, at Brown University, which has been uh, looking at the costs of these wars for many, many years with the great detail. Their estimate is basically, they use an estimate of eight trillion, but uh, I just want to be cautious. The five trillion is roughly the direct outlays. Another trillion is roughly the interest on the debt taken for the first five trillion right, outlays. Right, right, and then right. two trillion that they add in to reach eight is for the future healthcare costs of the veterans whose limbs were destroyed, who faced so many uh, health conditions as a result. This is US veterans as a result of these wars. So they put the number at eight trillion. I put the number at five trillion because I said the future costs, well, that's uh, for the future. And I didn't count uh, the interest on the debt, but we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars per household and for nothing absolutely not one single positive result and why what the u.s is doing uh, not just to itself but to the citizens of america is absolutely disgusting and i think that is not just in america this this is happening within europe as well by Every time they send money over to Ukraine or wherever it is, or it doesn't matter where they send the money over to, if, if it's uh, um, to do with wars, it's about benefiting those people who have invested in wars, not the people. As you've heard, Jeffrey Sachs said, tens of thousands uh, 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 or thousands of pounds each America household has to pay back, not the government. Why? Because the government taxes your ass and takes that money and uses it to fund wars, to benefit themselves. It's a spiral, it's a perpetual spiral and it needs to stop. This is why we need a cryptocurrency um, uh, and blockchain and stuff so it can be accountable. They can't just go and cause wars willingly without accountability. I know you can hear somebody speak out um, Turkey's Erdogan says Israel PM Netanyahu is no different from and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it because you know if I say the, the word one is going to get a strike so let him say it institutions which spend big budgets when it comes to Israel and the persecution of Israel we have understood that their discourse was empty since the uh, attack started it has been 80 days since then and right in front of our eyes for 80 days all virtues relating to humanity have been uh, shot at at stadiums we saw the nazi camps of israelis 
How does this happen? They used to talk about Hitler, but how are you any different than Hitler? Bunlar bize Hitler'i de aratacak. This is even worse than Hitler. What Netanyahu is doing is no less than what Hitler did. So, Hitler was not as rich as he was. He is richer than Hitler. He takes support from the West. He receives every kind of support from the US. And with all that support, more than 20,000 Gazans were killed. The voice that is standing with the innocent and the oppressed is the voice of the Muslim Turk. Even during war, hospitals or schools or houses of worship or universities should not be touched, but they were bombed. Gazan scientists were martyred together with their families. The barbarism in Gaza was covered by journalists, but close to 100 journalists were massacred. And why do you think Israel is massacring these journalists? Because they don't want the damn truth to come out. The fact is, at least somebody's talking about it. Moving on, we're going through uh, um, the America's going to uh, not be the, the country that it was if it carries on the way it is. Uh, their digital IDs, all that kind of stuff is coming out. And you're going to hear now from, um, um, I think it's Australia, no, is it New Zealand, where he talks about decentralization and um, the three three um, top things they want to see ha happening within the digital asset space. As all of you know very well in this room, all New Zealand businesses and organisations can build their digital capability and reap the rewards through greater use of digital tools and services. The digital strategy uh, is intended as a living strategy that will continue to evolve and change with technology, uh, helping us to adapt to new issues and opportunities and there'll be a refresh of that action plan year by year. Now, I want to say a couple of things about expectations for industry. It's clear um, that the international payments industry is evolving rapidly, both in consumer expectations and in the technology underpinning payment systems. I was encouraged uh, by the forward thinking and aspiration laid out in Payments New Zealand's Payments Modernisation Plan. It is the kind of thinking that will allow this country to be well positioned in a rapidly changing landscape. I also agree with the sentiment that a leading payment system is one of the key preconditions for becoming a world-class digital nation and a flourishing and for a flourishing and prosperous Aotearoa New Zealand. So I'll be looking to Payments New Zealand to provide industry leadership in driving our payments ecosystem forward. However, I recognise it is not only up to the innovators in the industry to determine the future direction of payments. Policymakers and regulators also play a crucial role. The regulatory landscape is changing in ways I expect will help generate trust and facilitate innovation, competition and economic growth. All of which trust will enable Payments New Zealand to execute its vision of New Zealand having the world's most progressive payment system while making sure payments are simple and secure for Kiwis. And to close out my speech I'd like to update you on um, three key pieces of work the government's undertaking that will impact the payments industry. The first is the Digital Identity Services Trust Framework Bill which I consider a key initiative for achieving our vision for the digital strategy. I'm hoping that may come up in the House again uh, this week. As services increasingly move online, it's more important than ever that people can prove who they are online in a trusted, safe and consistent way. 
the Digital Identity Services Trust Framework Bill introduces a new regulatory framework that will establish standards for the provision of secure digital identity services. And ultimately, that's about making sure uh, people have control over their own data, including what they choose to share about themselves and who they choose to share it with. And it's anticipated that that will increase consumer confidence in digital identity services, as well as uh, fostering innovation in the tech industry and more broadly. The Trust Framework will set out requirements which must be met by digital identity service providers if they wish to become accredited. Consumers will be able to see if a provider is accredited based on a trust mark displayed against the service. The Trust Framework will not create a central repository or database to store people and organisations information. The rules and regulation will not allow for the integration of data from multiple sources into a single, single location. The proposed new system will be decentralised. Ultimately, the Trust Framework is designed for privacy. Personal information will not be accessible or shared without a person's consent. Information will only be stored for as long as it is needed and it will be securely encrypted both while it's stored and when it is in use to third parties. The Trust Framework will provide digital identity specific rules and regulations, but the existing safeguards of the Privacy Act will continue to apply to the Trust Framework as well. And I assume and uh, expect that the payments community will be particularly interested in the role of digital wallets under the trust framework. People will be able to access, uh, sorry, be able to choose digital wallets uh, to store their digital credentials. These wallets will become important tools for enabling us to securely store and share information, which may include information for electronic payments. So New Zealand's um, trying to foster much more decentralised um, identity as well as uh, crypto payment services. Um, I think that's the way forward and I'm hoping other countries will adopt that framework um, going forward because like we don't want to be controlled, nobody wants um, to be controlled by a CBDC or any other uh, form of centralised uh, currency. We uh, or I want a de decentralised uh, system and I hope that comes about as a result of what uh, New Zealand is uh, going to do uh, and, and you know I think they're likely to have it done because they're saying it's going to happen uh, um, hopefully that does pan out and there is no back doors um, to, to our, our, our information as it were. I'm going to play you a video from Professor Saint uh, or Peter Saint Onge, um, where he talks about universal basic income is coming to Canada. Canada hits the loop. The Treasury stage is set to hand every body two thousand per month, whether they work or not. That's ridiculous. This will uh, drive inflation. It will destroy the Treasury, and it will convert millions of um, Canadian workers into permanent parasites on the remaining uh, framework. On the remaining, on, on the remaining few who work. Now listen, okay. Universal basic income is coming to Canada. Will the U.S. be next? I've been warning of a UBI, universal basic income, for a while now, since that is where we are in the fall of Rome sequence. Recently, Canada's left-wing liberals proposed just such a scheme, dubbed the quote "guaranteed livable basic income." Lest one think it's just the Liberals who've gone mad, Canada's Conservative Party deputy leader then spoke warmly of it, saying Conservatives should, quote, own it. So, in all likelihood, it's coming. First off, what is a UBI? The idea is to give everybody just enough to get by whether or not they work. A typical number might be $1,000 per month. Supporters claim people will still work, which is hilarious, more on that in a moment. And many conservatives, such as the deputy leader, have been suckered with promises that it will replace the existing welfare state. Which, of course, is a lie. New welfare schemes are often sold that way, including the EITC here in the US, which was sold as a negative income tax. That would replace welfare as we know it. But of course, that never happened. The extra trillions just went on top because it turns out that handing free money is like salting a soup. It's easy to add. It's very, very hard to take away. 
Beyond the bait and switch, why is a UBI so bad? Partly because the cost is raid the treasury level, so perhaps $3 trillion per year in the US, but mostly because it would radically expand our growing army of permanently unemployed couch surfing parasites who would do little work beyond voting for more welfare. To see why, I consider two similar phenomena today, unemployment benefits and pensions. A few years ago, the New York Times put out a major time use survey, finding that while full-time workers spend five hours a day at work, unemployed people on benefits spend just 30 minutes a day looking for work. So how do they spend the other four and a half hours? Watching TV, napping, surfing the internet, playing games, and hanging out with their girlfriend. So that's a 90% drop in work. We've got similar numbers from retirement. Once Americans hit that magic 65 line, the Bureau of Labor Statistics tallied up the number of seniors working. That came out to 8% working full-time, 7% working part-time, which compares to 63% of the general population. So in that case, it's an 80% drop. Beyond the extortionate taxes on the few who still would work, the main victims would be the young will be bribed out of entry-level jobs, ushered into a life of quasi-poverty, doing nothing, having nothing, and complaining about it on TikTok. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained. Vote buying has been popular since at least the Roman Empire, who put the bread in bread and circuses, and it's driven the country to ruin since at least the Roman Empire. But the political calculus is irresistible. All those millions of juicy votes. Now, COVID was the test case in Canada and in many other countries, and the next recession, you can be sure they will push it hard here in America. As for long-suffering Canadians, it looks like it will get worse before it gets better. By the way, guys, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. You're here. Now you're going to hear from, um, I don't know what his name is. Uh, what is his name? I don't know. Uh, but he's going to talk about the Great Scale ETF and how that basically it's a trojan horse in my view uh, or his view actually sorry i actually um no blackrock uh, bitcoin etf sorry um and i get what he's trying to say here so let's go and pick it up and get him saying what god say Hello there, baby doll. So what is really going on with the grayscale link to the bitcoin spot etf in a nutshell in 2022 Barry Schulbert was doing accounting irregularities or Ponzi stuff and he was being a very naughty boy. So the government can see his 600,000 Bitcoin stash. And now it's basically been confirmed from Max Kaiser that this Bitcoin spot ETF is a Trojan horse. If I only had a friend out here who was saying it was a Trojan horse the whole time. Gee, I can't figure it out. Now, unfortunately, there's only 69,000 Bitcoin or so in the inventory, this is the rumor, and it's cash in, cash out only. So if you buy it, you can only redeem for cash. You can't get real Bitcoin out. So it's not an up only vortex. Also, the government has a backup plan in case the price of Bitcoin gets too high, too fast and starts embarrassing them. And their plan, its name is Barry Schilbert. Now, Barry Schulbert, unfortunately, because they did the bad stuff, you know, the naughty stuff in 2022, the government is probably cutting a deal with them. They go, hey, you know, if you don't cut a deal with us, we're going to liquidate your Bitcoin. We're going to put you in jail. And he's like, no, he's like, no, no, not the hot candle wax on my nipples. Now, the government has a plan. They do this with gold. They need access to a big, large quantity of spot just in case the asset gets out of hand so they can smash it down and control it. This is the emergency. They have other methods too, like they can route volume in certain places. They can uh, also offer incentives. They do the futures only. They can do a lot of tricky stuff that they do with gold they, they, and they do all of it. All right, now, unfortunately, this is really is the thorn in our side because now the Bitcoin spot ETF, the government's not scared of up only because they have access to someone's stash. We are now seeing there's been like some emergency signatures required for GBTC. They've changed some legal words here and there to getting everyone to agree. So basically, you can could, you could tell the writing's on the wall, friends. So now you're seeing how all of it's linked. And was it always going to happen? I don't know. Were well, they always going to find dirt on Barry? We don't know either. But just to let you know, it is a Trojan horse. And their ultimate plan is probably 
to keep a cap on Bitcoin. Not to make it go down forever because then you'll know who's behind it. It's to just, it's to basically slow it down, keep it on track, and they've learned everything they need to do from gold, okay? Because if Bitcoin goes up, it embarrasses fiat currency and the governments don't like that. We're in the then they fight you face, all right? So what do you do from here? Now you know this information, you know what's really going on behind the scenes, okay? Well, unfortunately, the next step is they're gonna try ban self-custody, okay, friends? So look, in the event of emergency, Here's the thing, they ban self-custody. Two, you have to redeem. So this is the thing. So, you know, if you're wondering, okay, if they have all that spot Bitcoin, what do they do? Well, the GBTC holders, they will force them to take an accepted payment of fiat. So let's say Bitcoin is 100K and they want to stop it. They'll say, hey, we'll give you 105,000 for your Bitcoin. They go, sweet, I get to sell above market. But here's the thing, they'll put it into your US bank account and they'll do what they did in Australia, where you can only put $10,000 per month coming in. So now they've slowed it down and you can't get your money back in. You can't buy Bitcoin back again. All these people get their money cash payout. And then the government, they basically, they basically it's open season. They can do whatever they want, slow down the price, stop the mania, and then they you know do their next round of FUD. But it's very unfortunate that's happening. But hey, if you're early, you get to reap the rewards. Don't listen to all these scum poopy heads who are telling you, we're gonna flip gold, we're gonna go up and do this. No, man, no. Do you honestly think the government, the government has been spending 40 years manipulating gold? Do you think they're gonna let Bitcoin get to gold's market price? If they see gold as a threat to them and gold 10 trillion, do you think they're gonna let Bitcoin get there? Just have a think about that, okay? They think we're criminals. Why would the government give a gun to a criminal? Okay, so at the end of the day, you can only do one thing really, you get long. Get long on altcoins because Bitcoin's gonna slow down and the crowd's already seeing, you know, Bitcoin's only got like a two, two and a half X for me anyway before the retailers think they're gonna get out. So everybody's looking at those, the blue chips, Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think you gotta look for everything else. What's that? I guess you'll find out soon, hey? Catch you soon. So I hope you guys are paying attention because this could be a catalyst at the end of the day, whether it is or not, I don't know. I'm not an analyst, I'm not somebody who will studies the market in, in, in that way but it is quite likely since they have been manipulating gold for this length of time gold has not really risen past the, like two thousand dollars per ounce at all has it really um well this probably isn't a part of that now uh, quite simply because of what's going on in the market i don't or or, 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 or the, the, the problems that the usa has is having but it really didn't, and apparently, wasn't it JP Morgan or one of them not was manipulating the price of gold? And he says it, you know, they did, they do do these things, they do manipulate stuff. So is this um, ETS, what ETF uh, manipulation tool um, um, to keep the price of Bitcoin down, or will it, will they let it run? Uh, 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 and you know, I don't know, I can't, I can't answer that. But the altcoin. Uh, discussion is well, well worth having because we have suppressed assets like XRP, XLM, XDC, HBAR uh, um, and, uh, and I will go over XDC and what it does. XDC is uh, um, trade finance. The UK has passed that bill. I've mentioned this before. Uh, and it's also ISO 222 uh, 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 code, along with um, X, XLM, X, um, XRP, Hedera, uh, IOTA, uh, yeah, um, I can't remember any more off the top of my head, but really and truly, the ISO 222 tokens are where you want to be looking at because alt they're altcoins, uh, uh, and at the end of the day, yeah, uh, um, meme coins, yes, yes, people are going to make money from them, blah, 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 but you've got to catch them early and before the masses get in. Uh, um, and it's not something I I I um, I've fallen prey to getting in meme coins um, when it's been too late, and I'm not going to do that again, uh, um, unless it's like something like no 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 one cent per per, per coin. Um, uh, you know, the, the way I see this market is anything that's going to be linked to XRP, say for flare 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 the flare um, DeFi contract that um, is hopefully coming out next year and they're building that, that will hopefully allow um, people to earn um, income by just staking their flare they can they can choose to earn be bitcoin eth 
or XRP using the Flare network. Um, you have XDC doing what they do with trade. You have XLM uh, and the payments infrastructure behind that and XRP, more importantly, taking over um, from SWIFT to a certain extent. Whether they do or not, whether SWIFT leverages their technology, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, it's one of those things that we are not given that much privileged privi in, in, information from. But I do know XRP is global payments. Um, I also know um, XLM it, um, is working with um, MoneyGram. I also understand that. So, uh, so is um, XRP working with MoneyGram. I don't know the roles they're going to play, but I know they are working with them. Look at the market from a utility standpoint if you are going to invest. If you like this kind of uh, material, please like and, call, uh, like and subscribe. But really and truly, you must or you should be, should I say, looking at utility driven assets as opposed to assets that are just popping off here, there, and everywhere. Um, who said it? Uh, Brad Gardinghouse said. 99% of this market is going to go to pot. So where would where would you want to park your 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 assets thinking about it from that perspective? Thinking about it from the perspective of real use uh, well, what real use case as opposed to meme coins that have no value in the back is you know what I mean people are just jumping on because they're here. Oh, it's going to be big, do you know what I mean? And, oh, it's going to be massive. You don't know what's behind it. You don't do any research. You just go and buy it. And half the time, those meme coins are not on um, the rep reputable exchanges like uh, Coinbase or Kraken or, or, or uh, BitGet or, or other exchanges. They're usually on something like Uniswap. And I, for, 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 for life of me, are trying to figure out Right, if I get it on Uniswap, where do I start store it? Do I store it on Uniswap? I don't believe in storing my assets in Uniswap. I want my assets in cold storage. This is why I have a ledger and a decent wallet. I have that quite simply because I don't want anybody else having access to the tokens. Because for one, the exchange should close down. So it's worth getting something like a decent, decent wallet or, 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 or or uphold app if you will so you could you know up, upholds has come all, a long way um, um, and it's and it's widely accepted especially in the uk now as well and um, globally they're doing really really well with uphold you could actually use you, you spend your crypto directly from the app using their card so simple yeah so there are other there are ways in which to acquire tokens that are a use case and have value like the XTC, like the XLM, like the XRP, like the HBAR, like the I IOTA, you know, and Quant is another one. People are not um, thinking about it, it's a bit expensive at the moment. Quant is a very good token, it's doing massive things within the market. So, all I have to say to you guys look, right, the USA is completely and utterly messed up. Okay, they're, they're greedy, seriously greedy. There's something so wrong within that country, it's unbelievable. You know what? It don't matter because what they do shouldn't affect you. What you should be thinking about is how can I mitigate all of this crap? How can I um, use the wealth that they give me? Like, uh, as uh, you know, in Canada's case, if they're going to give each person 2000 uh, 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 a month, regardless whether they work or not. Guess what? Those two thousand people, that, that, that those people, sorry, um, who have been given two thousand and are working, gonna do with that money? Hmm. I'll be if I was that person working, I'll be taking that money and investing in digital assets. And if I was that person sat on my ass at home, I would be investing in digital assets. People are not seeing these opportunities. They're they've been given, not being funny, the greatest transfer of wealth. It's been shoved down your bloody neck, right? And you're uh, 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 and. 99% of the people out there are just sat on their hands and they're watching this shit go past. I'm sorry to swear. And I probably will have to put this under, you know, kids can't watch it, blah, blah, blah. And they're watching this stuff happen right in front of their faces and they're not.
taking it literally and looking at it for what it is. You're having the news, the, the, you know, the news um, come out, CBNC and all those far, Fox, blah, blah, blah. Talk about cryptos now, massively. Not shilling it, not being horrible against it. They're talking about it, they're bigging it up. Are you gonna sit on your hands? Are you gonna let this opportunity pass you by? Seriously, think about it. I wouldn't be buying cryptos right now. Well, I wouldn't be buying, say, Bitcoin right now because you don't know what's going to happen. You may have to wait till it crashes down a bit. But you know what I mean? But there are other tokens that you could be looking at. Like I said, XRP, XLM, and I keep mentioning those tokens, XDC. And, you know, you can get them on either Kraken, Coin, well, Coinbase does a few of them. Kraken does a few. Um, uh, BitTrue. Um, where else can you go? And these are regulated uh, uh, sites. BitTrue, Kraken, and, uh, uh, and and Coinbase are regulated as well as Binance is regulated or coming into compliance given what they had to spend on their four point the four point whatever mil billion uh, 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 fine by um, the USA because the USA is just damn greedy. Seriously, Binance was doing absolutely fine. But because of the way the world is, is run and how it's run and the, and the, um, the trap doors, if you will, that they put in place for people who are trying to do better, who are trying to create decentralized organization. And I think we, what you've heard from, you know, the guy from New Zealand is the perfect way forward. And we will have that if you want it. If you want to be stuck in a centralized system, you go ahead. You give away your data. That's you. That's on you. Yeah, that's your choice to do so. If you want to be stuck in a system that you are, well, if you think about it, they give you money to stay at home and you're just spending it on crap and not investing it. Think about it. I would not be one of those people sat on my backside at home looking at this market fly by me and not putting at least some, at least a 10 or a month or 10 or a week, it doesn't matter. $10, $20, whatever it is, 10 pound, 20 pound, whatever it is, yen, whatever, whatever it is, to be ahead of the 99% of people who are sat at home, looking at the television, watching Netflix, they can afford to bloody watch Netflix, and they can afford to pay the Amazon subscription so they can get their shit delivered to them at home without them having to go out the house wake up and invest in yourself the greatest transfer of wealth is taking place right now right in front of your face and you're sat on your hands or your ass and you're not doing anything about it wake up seriously wake up anyway if you like this content do check live stuff out um yeah. I'm done. take care